today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a box from a card. We're going to use this paper pumpkin kit. It's called Berry Comforting Paper Pumpkin Kit, December 2020 by Stampin' Up. I already cut up a couple of these cards. We're going to turn them into boxes. After I show you the process, I'm going to then start from the very beginning and show you how I would cut the cards up. So you're not going to miss any steps. I'm going to show you at different angles. I'll write down the measurements in the description later. And I will even give you sneak peeks of what my last video was about before I even show you these boxes. But I did make other kinds of boxes. You can decorate. These are, these are called the, these ones here. Love you always treat boxes. Okay, so you could do a lot with your paper pumpkin kits. These are just boxes you can decorate by using designer series paper. Okay. I showed 26 projects you can make with your paper pumpkin kit. This is just using the gold mini pizza boxes and decorating them. I showed how you can create your own tag treats. Now this is all still on my table. I haven't really cleaned up my table yet. Um, some cards I actually did mail out already, but, but for the most part, I can show you some other boxes and then I'm going to show you what's in these boxes and then we're just going to get the project started. Okay, so we're, I'm making a box. Just so you know, we're making a box for this little fizzies, bubble fizzy bears. We're going to make a box to fit the fizzy bears. So we'll put the fizzy bears right there. That's what this box is going to be. And we're going and we're also going to make a box that's a, there's another one of those little treats. And I took all the twine off, so we're going to make a box like this. We're not going to, I'm not going to do the whole, the stamping part, right? I'm just trying to show you how to make a box in this tutorial. Okay, so there were other tutorials. This is probably part four by now of this, where I talked about this kit. In part one, I showed with the scan and cut how to cut out the bears and how to align your machine. And then I did another tutorial on how to, create a, a stamping mask with the scan and cut. And that's when I, I did a tutorial on how to cut this out of mylar and how to use it to stamp and color your bear. So I'm not gonna go over that again because that's where I showed you how to color the bears. Okay, then I did another tutorial or another video where I showed 26 projects you can create with the paper pumpkin kit. So in that video, I said, I will come back and just show you the boxes only. Okay, so these are the boxes we're making. All right, so let's just get started. Since I made one with this Calypso coral color earlier, I'm gonna go ahead and make one of this size using this, this color here. And the way you know the colors is right here, because it'll tell you the coordinating colors of this kit. Basic gray, Calypso coral, cinnamon cider, daffodil delight, rich razzleberry, and soft sea foam and white. So I'm gonna make this box now in this color, because I already have a box in this color, okay? Yes, I'm live, Janet. YouTube is acting up, I know. Every, my internet's always acting up. It's probably my side. All right, so let's just do this box. Now, before, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over the measurements, but I, I want you to not get bogged down on measurements because it really doesn't matter so much. What matters is that your lid, okay? Here, here's your, this is your lid, the lid of your box. Okay, this is the lid of your box. Your lid and your bottom of your box have to be slightly different sizes, okay? High sale, high season. And I'm gonna call this a smidgen for now. I'm not gonna give you the measurement for now because I'm not getting you bogged down. This bottom of the box is a smidgen smaller than the top of the box, okay? It does not matter, once you learn the skill, it doesn't matter what you do with it. It doesn't matter what you do, it's always the same concept. Now here you go again. This one is, I started out with different size paper, but see, the lid, the bottom of the box is a smidgen smaller than the top of the box, okay? It doesn't matter what two size papers you start out with, is what I'm saying. As long as your lid is a little bit small, a little bit bigger than the bottom of your box. Okay, that's what matters. So let's go ahead and score. Now you're gonna score the same for the lid and the bottom. So what I'm teaching you right now is just this part of just making the box, and then we'll go in and we'll cut the card apart, and I'll give you the exact measurements. So what I wanna do is because I'm making a box like this. I'm going to score it. You have to score it the same on all sides. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to score it three quarters of an inch on all sides. Okay. 
Now this is this is called Simply Scored. It's a scoring tool. You may have a different scoreboard or you may be using your paper trimmer to score. The important thing is that you're going to score the same around all the sides. Okay, now you might be saying, why are you flipping your paper around? Because it's a lot easier and more accurate to flip your paper around and always do the three quarters of an inch than it is to try to do math and count backwards, right? Three quarters of an inch. Because if you try to do the math, you're most likely going to mess up unless you use the little markers. I do have little markers as well. Okay, well I'm glad you got fun stuff, Janet, in the mail. I'm glad you got happy mail. Awesome sauce. It's right on time. No, it's not quite on time for Christmas, but it's still never too late for happy mail. Now, I, I need to, to show you also there's a little spatula. And I'm going to have to reach for that. So let me move my... I'm just going to use my scan and cut spatula for now. So I had to reach for that. So here, I'm going to get this little spatula. And you're going to burnish the edges. So you're just going to flatten it all the edges of your box. Okay. So that's the bottom of my box. And then you're going to make these, see it's like the letter H, right? So I'm going to make these little marks. I'm going to cut like that. So first just cut, cut four lines. And that would, that would be enough, right? If you, but it, you need to do an extra little thing. But I want you to explain, I want to explain that if you're teaching kids to do this, that's enough, that you don't have to get into more with them, that, that's enough. The box is, is good. But we're professional crafters here, so we're going to do more than just do enough, right? We're going to make, we're going to do a, a couple extra little things to make it so that when you, when you turn this to the side, it doesn't stick out on top, right? Because we're professional crafters, we're going to do this. We're going to make little V's, and it's called mitering. We're going to miter the edges. You're going to go like this. You're going to make a little, see, you're going to make a little diagonal cut on every edge and you're also going to cut a little V. So you're really just messing with these flaps is what you're doing. You don't have to mess with, you don't have to mess with this middle section if you just mess with the, the four flaps because then you'll get in, you'll get the little, these little triangles cut out of there. So you like that. Hi Crystal, how you doing? Thank you for joining me without me ever announcing I go live. I'm glad you guys just Find out from YouTube I'm going live and pop on. All right, so there you go. So that's how to do the bottom of the box. Now a couple more tricks, tips and tricks. So what you want to do is you want to get get your glue of choice. Now you could use, we have other glues, but I like, I just personally like this kind of tacky glue when I'm making boxes, but I do use what's called tear and tape sometimes, other kinds of adhesives. I use Tombow glue that we sell, but I just... I have a lot of this tacky glue. I got it in like, you know, Hobby Lobby or somewhere. But and it's just, it's what I prefer to use, but there's no right or wrong. You know, everybody has adhesives of choice, right? I'm just keeping it real. I like to use what I like to use. Okay, now I'm going to take these little, I got these at Harbor Freight. These little, you can use clothespins as well. And you want to use those to help hold your box together so you can go about your business and do other things. These are really strong clips. You just have to flip them around like that. You, I can wiggle them in a minute before the, the glue dries solid. But in the meantime, you just, you just get it on there real quick and then you can wiggle it later. See, you can use a clothespin as well. I just have whatever is here. Okay, whatever is here in my room. So there's a clothespin. Okay, now you can wiggle it. Before it gets like, see, what I mean by wiggling it, making sure it's exactly accurate. Okay, before you, before it dries solid. Because that one's about to dry solid. Okay, and you want to make sure that those aren't sticking out, those edges. That's why we cut the little edges, right? We want to make sure they're not sticking out. And see how that's perfect, they're not sticking out on the sides? So that side is done. Okay, now we'll go ahead and do the lid, and then I'll, I'll get into this box, and then I'll show you how to do that box. Okay, we're going to do the lid. Same exact thing. No tricks. You don't even need to know measurements. Like I said, for this concept, you're just, all you need to know is that the lid is scored the same way as the bottom of the box. 
which is three quarters of an inch or whatever you decided for the side of your box. Okay, how does this work so well? It works because we made the bottom of the box a smidgen smaller than the top of the box. And when we made the bottom of the box a smidgen smaller, the lid will fit on the bottom of the box. It just magically fits. Okay, so I can burnish my edges first or I can cut the little edges first. It's up to you. It doesn't matter. There's no right or wrong way. I like to do this when I'm watching TV. Make a lot of boxes. And my little score, my Simply Score tool acts as a lap desk too because it's a nice big surface. Okay, so I could have burnished before I did the little mitering the edges. Let's give it so you can see that. See how they look? Wait, see. Can you see that? You're just cutting little triangles out of them. And you and and if you're not sure if you cut the edges off some of them, so sometimes I'm not sure if I did the edges, then I just line it up against a piece of paper. I'm like, oh yeah, I did do that side. Because you can't really tell. Okay, then you're gonna take your spatula. I'm using my scan and cut spatula and I'm just burnishing those edges. And all I'm saying is be like burnish. That's what it means. Like burnish, like burn. Burn, baby, burn. Okay. And Okay, so the bigger the flaps, like I would use if I'm watching TV, I'd probably use tear and tape if I had real big flaps. But since I have small flaps, that's when you definitely need glue. It's just harder to use tear and tape if you have, you know, huge flaps. I'm sorry, small flaps. It's easier if you have big flaps for tear and tape. This glue is just super goopy. Okay. And it doesn't really spread around. It just sort of, you have to make it spread around yourself. See, when you put that in there like that, you have to sort of, to make it spread around because it's so viscous, it's so thick. You have to get it in there and sort of wiggle it, jiggle it just a little bit. Okay, and I'm just taking my, tucking those in and I'm taking these off here. And there's my clothespin. Okay, after you get all four on there, you want to just sort of go in there and make sure that they're in the right spot before they dry solid because it's going to, this glue is going to dry quickly. But you just want to get it in there and make sure. Oops. Yep, I'm happy with that. Good, good, good. And this is foiled paper, so. I forgot to mention when you have foil paper, not like this, this one is not, this side's not foiled, but when you have foil paper, like this paper, be careful when you're using your spatula because you don't want to rub, you know, you, when you're burnishing, be careful because you don't want to rub the edges off. Okay, and that is it. That is the magic of making a card out of a box. We'll do some more. I'll do the next one faster. You'll just keep watching me do it. I'm gonna show you a different angle. So that's it, you're gonna take you're going to go like this. You're going to take those off. They're all dry. Okay, and you're going to put your bottom down there. Put your treats inside. I have some treats here. Here, we'll just put, just to show you what fits in there. Here, mini, mini chapstick, mini Tic Tacs. Here, all kinds of stuff will fit in here. Just trying to show you for scale. The kind of box we just made is for scale here. You can put two of those Hershey miniatures on top of each other, a couple little Tic Tacs, some baby chapstick, okay? And then there goes your lid. You put your lid on there, and the lid fits perfectly on there, okay? And that's how you do it. And then you take your twine. I just have leftover twine from when I was doing this yesterday. I had them all tied up, okay? Something like that, like... Wrap it around a couple times, tie it up. Okay, you get the idea. Then you're gonna put the then you're gonna put the wobble, the bear on a wobble spring. And like I said, I showed you how to color bears in a different video. This happens to be a retired set. 
But since I'm doing I'm a paper pumpkin kit, right? Just use the sentiments from your kit because that's not the point of this. The point is I did use a retired stamp set for this because I'm happy to be working on Happy New Year projects, right? So um, that's why I used this retired stamp set called Making Spirits Bright. But you're going to use whatever you have, right? The point is you're going to be able to make a box out of a card. And you're going to use whatever you have, whatever materials, whatever sentiment you have. And you're going to make a box. So we'll just do the little Get Well box next. I'm going to, I'm going to make it faster and then I'm going to show you how to get the measurements. Okay? So I'm going to make this one a little faster. I'm going to make this one in Get Well Soon. And this is from the kit and I'm going to use so the Calypso Coral now. Okay, only a couple differences. Again, I'm just going to reiterate. Let me see if anyone else came in there. Hi, Debbie. You too. Happy New Year. All right, so this is the same concept, but the, I start out with different size papers, but the same concept. My lid is a smidgen larger than the bottom of my box. Okay? So there's no mystery. I just want to take the mystery out of making boxes. Same, same concept. Hi, Sherry. Except that this time... I'm going to be scoring. You could start out with the same size card, but I did make this one a quarter inch smaller. I'll tell you the measurements. This time I'm scoring one and a quarter. I'm making a really deep box, one and a quarter around all the sides. Okay. Because I want to put this little fuzzy in there. Fizzy, bath fizzy. And again, I think it's a little, I think if you burnish the edges, then you end up with it gets easier than to cut these little triangles out, I think, if you've already burnished the edges. And I, I really recommend the Stampin' Up. I mean, you might say, oh, I have scissors of choice. Well, so did I. But now I can't live without these scissors. Because my other scissors, they dull, get dull so quickly. These don't get dull. And they, and they just, this is a great pair of snips. And it's really great for cutting ribbon, too. And yes, I don't have a dedicated one. In case you want to know, I cut the same ribbon with the same one I'm making boxes out of. I do have two pairs of the scissors, but one I'm keeping in a safe place so I don't so I always have a backup pair of scissors. This pair that I use all the time, I cut paper with it and I cut ribbon with it all the time. Okay? And so if you want to remember, did I do all the edges, then you put it on a dark, a darker piece of paper. I mean, you put the light just to make sure. See, yep, I did them all. Just to make sure you did them all. Okay, good. And then this one is just that same thing. Because I started out with a smidgen smaller for the bottom of the box. I'm still doing that same one and a quarter. Now, if you want your lid to stick out, you have to do some math. If you want, if you want your, like, if you want this lid to not cover the whole bottom and be smaller, then yeah, you would do a little bit more math. But that this concept still applies. You make your box. But I don't have to do any math the way I do it when I always make my the bottom of my box a smidgen smaller than the top of my box. I don't need to even do any math. But you can make this lid smaller. And then once you do it, once you get your templates, if you're making the same gift, like I'm going to do this how many more times? I'm doing this four more times. So I'm going to make a box for each fizzy. I'm going to put a bear, because the bear, I, I measured it so that the bear would fit right on top of the box. That's how I came up with this measurement. Not just that it would fit my fizzy, I wanted my bear to just fit on the top of the box. So that's how I came up with this size box. But once you do come up with a template, you're going to write it down and you can use it again and again. So I t this is a typical one I make a lot for my treats, is this size box here, for the treats. With the quarter inch on the side, because that's just a typical... I'm always making cards out of, or boxes out of cards. I'd rather do, I'd rather make boxes than make cards out of my paper pumpkin kits. So I'm excited when one comes, like a kit comes like this. Okay, now I'm not going to glue it because you get the idea of gluing it. But I just want to prove to you that this does fit. There's the bottom of my box. And there's the top of my box. Okay. Now we'll, and then we'll cut it up. See? There's the bottom of my box, there's the top of my box, and voila. Of course, it, you know, it would slip on easier if it was all. Okay, so there's the box. So now I made a box that fits this cute little bath fizzy. 
get another Beth Fizzy. And he kind of bulges in there. He's really tight, but you know, you don't want it to, you don't want it to move around, especially if you're shipping something. So he's going to fit in there like that, like so. A perfect little bed for the little teddy bear. Okay, and then you put, again, this one doesn't have a wobble spring, but you could put the bear in a wobble, or you could put get well soon. Okay, so now I'll just, now I'm going to show you with the card. We'll get the trimmer. I'll show you how I cut these. And now I'll give you the measurements since I know you probably want to know the exact measurements because when I do these tutorials, everyone's like, what's the exact measurements? And then, and then I always say like, you know, to my crafty friends, I always tell them, oh, well, I, you know, I didn't write it down or it's a smidgen. And then they keep asking me. So now I know I need to write it down in my, just, in my description. So I'm getting out my trimmer. And what you're going to do, let's just take a card here. And you're going to cut it. You're going to, you have to cut this, you know, this part off. You don't want the part with the score line on it, right? So keep your card flat. So let's talk about the big box. The big box meaning this box here, right? This box here you want to start out with. So we want the bigger one first. It's going to be four and an eighth. Okay. Now, unlike the trim, unlike this one, this one goes an eighth. In this this one here, meaning the score, simply score it has eighths of an inch, but this trimmer has sixteenths of an inch. This paper trimmer. Okay. You can also get a scoring blade for your paper trimmer. I took my scoring blade off because I prefer to score with the simply scored. But the, your paper trimmer is all you need because it comes with a scoring tool. Okay. Hi, Joy. Yeah, you know, you need, do I need scissors to cut this? No, you can make boxes with your scan and cut, but you're not going to be able to, is that what you're asking? I do teach how to make boxes with your scan and cut, but you're not going to be able to make them out of your cards because good luck trying to get your scan and cut to cut the perfect size box out of your card. I'm trying to maximize all this cardstock material. So it's best to make a box manually because I'm trying to utilize the whole card. But yes, you can, of course, make boxes with your scan and cut. And I teach you how to do that as well. We're paper crafters. Use whatever tools you have. All right, so anyway, this is a, this is this um, goes in sixteenths of an inch. So I'm just this for this one. I'm going to make this four and an eighth inch. Okay, the top of the box. So the the so we're we're going four and an eighth inch, which means, right? An eighth is two sixteenths of an inch of an inch. Right, two little two little marks over. Okay, and then I'm going to turn it, and I'm going to. I think I'm just going to leave it like it is, right? Five and a half, right? It's five and a half exactly, okay? So we'll write this down for you. I know you guys want to know. So top of the box is four. Well, we have to do length first. Let's just do length. We have to sh we should say length times it. Top is going to be five and a half inches times four and one eighth inches, okay? So that's the top of the box. Now the bottom of the box, we need to make it a smidgen smaller, right? It's, it's always, so we got to get rid of this piece. So turn it around and make sure you cut it like that. We're getting rid of that. So we want it to be, so we already know it's four, this one's four and an eighth. So what's a smidgen? A smidgen by definition is like a sixteenth of an inch, right? So instead of four and an eighth, I'm going to just show you this closer. Okay. So I hope you can see that. So instead of four and an eighth, which is two sixteenths, right? You're going four and one sixteenth. So you're just doing one little one little nub nub over is one sixteenth. So four and sixteenth one sixteenth of an inch. Okay, and then you test it because sometimes I have epic fails. So you test it. You make sure that this is a smidgen smaller. Here, let's I turn it around so you can see the color contrast. And it is. That's what a sixteenth of an inch looks like. Okay? So let's write down that part. We just did that part. We did times four. And one sixteenth. That's the bottom. This is the bottom of the box. Okay, now we got to do the half. We got to do, so we got five and a half, right? But now we need it to be, but we can't use that side of our scoreboard because that side you can't see that, you can't see the, uh, the numbers very well. So that, that we're going to do it this way. We're going to, so we know where this is five and a half, but we need to get a sixteenth of an inch off of that. Right, so instead of five and a half, 
we're going to go five and so you got to think of it like this five and a half what's that in sixteenths of an inch it's really eight sixteenths of an inch right a half is five and eight sixteenths of an inch so if i want one sixteenth off of that i want five and seven sixteenths of an inch that's what i need because i need to chop off the sixteenth of an inch a smidgen right so five and seven sixteenths of an inch see one two three four five six seven little seven little things you're just going one you're just going one sixteenth before the before the five and a half there so see it's like there's five and a half I, it's easier if i just show you there's five and a half right and then you're just going one line one line smaller that's a sixteenth of an inch and then you test it and then you test it so there you're testing it and now your bottom of your box is is that size it's just smaller okay so now for this box here and then the so that box I was scoring at score at See now it's good I'm writing notes now because now I'll have the notes to put in the video description. Three quarters of an inch on all sides. Okay? So you always want to score the same on all sides. So that's that box. And then the other box, we'll just do one for the other box since I need to make a bunch of these anyway. This was pretty close. I mean, I just, I ended up just making it. I'm actually just going to write the measurement. I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it real quick, but then instead of me telling you what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do it real quick and then I'll tell you the measurements. So this one was five and a quarter. Oh, wait, just, wait, first one. Let's do the four inches first. We'll do the four side. We'll do four. It was four and an eighth. We still had the four and an eighth for the top of the box. So that was, that was easy. Okay, and then for the bottom of the box, it was four and a sixteenth. So that part was the same. But I did make the other, I made the long edge. And let's test that part. Okay, we got that part. We're testing it, right? And now I made, I did make this, this side a little bit shorter because I wanted, I wanted this to be snug in here. Snug as a bug in a rug. So we are going to So we, we got the top of the box. That was the four and an eighth. And by five and a quarter. That's a half. That's a quarter. So I was just taking, basically I was taking a quarter inch. I just made this a quarter inch smaller when I started. That's all for that box. And then this one was three sixteenths. So I will write this down. And we'll have it and we'll test it and then we'll just i'll score it real quick i'm not going to do the cutting i'm just going to do the scoring real quick and you'll get to see that all right so for that box that was this box and now we're going to show you the measurements for this box we have the top It's going to be that the second part is the same. So we have that same four and an eighth. We didn't do anything different there. Four and a sixteenth. That was the same. It was just that this part was a little bit different. This part, the length was four and a quarter by four and an eighth. And then the bottom was five and three sixteenths of an inch. Okay. And that's the bottom of the box. And this time we score at one and one quarter inch and I'll be putting this in the description so you don't have to take copious notes but that's that's the inch mark and that's how to make that box there and I'll go ahead and score it since we just did it one more time for a review okay one and a quarter all around right okay that's that was this one This one, the one that's longer, the one that we started with the whole card, using the whole card, with that one we scored three quarters of an inch all around. Okay. 
And that is how you make a box out of a card. And you could just do this all day long to your heart's content. Mix and match, make different sized lids. If you want your lids to be shorter, just do some measurements that you need to make your lids, to make the bottom of the box stick out. But I like to just use the whole card. To me, it's easier. It makes the box very sturdy and it keeps, as if, it keeps the box from collapsing when you're shipping the boxes, which I do a lot. I ship, and not a lot, I do it like 90% of the time. I ship things, okay? And this gives it a lot more reinforcement when the, when the lid is the same size. And of course you can mix and match. You could put a different color bottom on your box. All right, so let me see if there are any questions. Let's see who else jumped on here. Lisa, aloha Lisa. Yes, I, I think it, my Christmas was pretty cool. I'm having, you know, sort of a staycation as we all are. Spent time with my hubby. So yes, did have a good Christmas. And now I'm back to work. <laughs> Took a couple days off, I'm back to work. And uh, sharing, sharing crafts and sharing fun stuff. And hopefully I'll get to share how to make this one as well at some point. This party favor box that you guys seem to really love when I showed it on my last video. That Maybe this will be one of my next projects. We'll see. I'll definitely show this in one of my videos. So I hope you go in ahead and make yourself some treat boxes using the Paper Pumpkin Kit Berry Comforting. You can make 12 boxes. Or, if you'd like, the Bath Fizzies. I just got them at a local store. They were $10 for, ten, for ten, six of them. $10 for six of them. I'm sure you can get them at the five and below. I mean... Just look around. I, I just knew this kit was coming, and, I, and they, now I just started seeing everything in bears. It's kind of crazy. You know a kit's coming, right? Yeah, 10, 10 bucks. See, look, here's the price. 10 bucks. 10 bucks for f six bath fizzies. And the thing is, like, you know the kit's coming because it said, like, Stampin' Up! lets us know this kit's coming. Very comforting. So then everywhere I looked, I started seeing bears. I never even noticed bears before. So next thing you know, I started seeing these little guys. Oh, I got the Christmas, you know, Lindor bear chocolates. So next thing you know, I started finding everything with bears on it. I got gummy bears. I started making gummy bear little treats out of this. And you know what's really funny? This, um, I, do have to, I do have to say that this one is a red panda. <laughs> Cynthia, said, Cynthia wrote me and said, uh, you know, that's, I kept calling it a raccoon in my video, and it's a red panda. But then my husband pointed out that a red panda is not really a bear either, but at least now we know where the artists were coming from. You know, red panda, the bear, and then the koala bears, which aren't really bears either. Another, they're marsupials, as my Australian friends pointed out. And one of them even had these running around in their yard. But anyway, that's, we were cracking up about that. Because every time I get the animals wrong when I talk about these animals on these, these kits. But it's not a raccoon, it's a red panda. All right, so back to this. So back to getting these little... So, so I started seeing these everywhere. So you can use gummy bears. You can do Beth fizzies. I mean, you can just now get themes to go with your gifts. Like, as you see that the next kit is coming, the next one's Valentine's Day, the next kit. And there's going to be an add-on kit for that. So like now you can start getting things with, for Valentine's Day that are going to fit into those treat boxes and things that are coming. So you'll, have, so you'll be ready. Okay, so if you check out my last video, here's just a sneak peek. I can't show you all 26 projects right now because we just don't have time. But I did show 26 projects I created using the Berry Comforting Paper Pumpkin Kit. I showed you a few here. I showed you boxes. I showed you tags. I did some for Christmas. I did some for Valentine's Day. I made a lot with this kit, and I'm still going. Now I'm on my second kit that I just opened up. So now that's what I'm working on. So if you missed those measurements, here they are. You can freeze your frame. And I'll be like typing those up later for you. But that's all for now. This is the Paper Chef. And have a happy new year. <laughs> Thank you.